What's up YouTube? Hey, so have you ever had a bow that just fits you absolutely perfect? And then when you go to upgrade your bow, that new bow just doesn't quite fit like your old bow. Oh my gosh. So we're going to make your new bow fit just like your old bow. Josh Jones, MFJJ is going to come in here and show you just a couple hacks to make that little tweak and adjustment. It does involve sometimes tightening the string a little bit, so you might need some help, but at least you'll have a better picture of how to do this. Check this video out. Yeah, yo, yo. So today we are with MFJJ and we are at Spokane Valley Archery and Josh and I were talking and we said, you know, I really like the Vertex. That's, a, you know, it's a, it's a fairly older bow, but I've always just loved it. I can't get rid of it. It just fits right. And Josh was saying, well, Dan, you know, we could make a video on. Well, the reality of it, and we've talked about this several times, is the length the peep height, the positionings of this bow fit you better and that's why you like it. It's not because you like that bow so much, it's that you like the way that bow fits. So what we're gonna do today is cover a couple of basic things you can do to measure exactly the sizes and the fundamentals of this. So when you buy this, you can incorporate these, like the exact length, the exact peep height, the exact peep to front sight positionings. So everything fits you exactly the same. And we're gonna compare that to that and make that the same measurements as that. Simple as that. <laughs> a lot of you guys end up buying a new bow every year, every other year. Some of you hold on to them for many years, but the reality is, let's show you guys how to make that new bow feel and fit like that old bow. Come along. Okay, so number one most important thing is to ensure that if the bow you had prior seemed to fit you just perfectly. We want the draw length to be exactly the same. Not, and that's not, hey, I'm a 28. I need 28. Let's measure the exact draw length of each bow and compare it. So we'll start with our Vertex. This, this is the baseline? Yeah, this is the baseline of original fit that he liked. Probably killed the most animals and, with mm -hmm. one bow. This and is it. This is a measuring arrow, but you can take just an arrow shaft and put it in there and mark it with a pen. And what we're trying to do is get a uniform measurement off the bolt hole right here, because they'll be the same on every bow. And so Dan measures to the back of the bolt hole at 25 and a quarter according to this arrow. So we're going to compare that to the other. Go ahead and set it forward. Everybody got 25 and a quarter. Set that down. So this is measuring out at about 25 and a half. So this bow is a quarter inch longer draw length than the other bow, everything else being equal. So now that's a tricky one. Problem you're going to run into with that is they don't have quarter inch modules. So the only way to really fix that is to shorten or lengthen the bowstring, which will measure, will mess with your peak weight and your let off a little bit. But in an effort to try to make this as perfect as possible for Dan, so he shoots this bow as good as he ever shot that bow, we're gonna go ahead and twist the string up a little bit and let the cables out a little bit until we get that measurement. The next thing you're gonna wanna measure after that, which we can use the same stuff for, is the peep height. So if you wanna grab that bow again, now this one requires a friend or a, a shooting machine or whatnot. And now we're gonna turn and face this direction instead of that direction so we can measure it from this side. And all we're gonna do is measure from the center, from the top of the arrow shaft to the center of the peep at full draw at vertical because every bow is gonna have a different string angle. The only true metrics that you can get square is where the arrow shaft is and how high the peep is straight up ignoring the bowstring. So that's what we're gonna measure this one to that one. So we're gonna set it right on top of the arrow and go to the center of the peep. And that's three and five eighths is right to the middle. Now that's actually really close, but that peep's a tiny bit lower. And if you go off of your original mark that's there, yeah, it's exact. Cool. So, but part of that is as your draw length gets longer, the peep position is going to be in a different spot. So we have to get the draw length on this right before we can finalize that. Step by step. So, and then the other one you can measure is the peep to the front sight, but that will be the same if you mounted your sight distance the same right. off of the bow. 
and you get the draw length set the same. Okay. So really the biggest part is usually the length. That's the thing that people struggle with the most, and that makes sense why that bow feels a little more squirrely, yep. because it's longer. Longer almost always shoots worse, because you're trying a harder time to hold it steady, but wants to move around a little more. Yeah, so the V3 has felt just a touch squirrely. And it's probably just that quarter inch of length. So yep, when we that's get that it. string done, we put it on it, reset the length. Tell them to check out the draw length video. Oh yeah. So if you guys are sitting there wondering like, well, how do I know my draw length? Is it right? Am I overdrawn? Is it too short? Is check out our draw video. We'll put a link right here in the top of your screen. Check that video out first. Make sure you watch that. It's a great asset to understand what your draw length should look like. Gives you a good guideline what to look for. Okay. And we are exactly 25 and a quarter to the back of the burger hole. So Yay. That is exactly the same length as your vertex. So now we need to do it again and measure your peep height because we're looking for three and five eighths. So drop back. Money. That's three and five eighths. So let's sit down. Do you notice that length difference at all? A little quarter? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. All right. 100%. Cool. We'll tie that in place feels and good. then we can go shoot that outside and see how that feels to you. Close. Nice. Nice. Good group. So your, your rail's good, your bubble head's off. So we don't need that anymore. So, so you just made a second axis adjustment? Yeah, and then your third we should shoot in. So We can do that down the road. I yeah. like shooting them in. I finally kind of figured out how to do that fast and, and it's that, so and easy. Yep. And only this site has that easy, only this part right here has yep. that easy dope for it. All right, so 275, is that your tape yep. side? So we have that package right over here. We'll cut 275 and stick it on there. And, and that's what we want, 274 and a half. We'll use that one. Now the, the rail will only fit one side of the numbers. So if you want to look at this, do you want your index needle covering the number nope. like that? We'll or do you want it off. to where you can see the other side, but it's actually physically touching the line? Yep. That's usually how I like to run it. FPS thing on the top. In case you need a different one, yep. you know which one that is. Smart. So if you trim that off, you won't remember what your velocity was, almost guarantee it. And to make this fit better on here, Dan, I'm gonna cut off your 100 yard number. Yep. So it doesn't, so you know that's 100, but it doesn't pultrude out and catch on stuff. It's just wide enough for that. When are the black gold gonna make longer tapes, like the knock-on has the 110 and the 120s? Well, they actually made these tapes off of Archer's Advantage okay. originally, and then just put them on a spreadsheet and printed them. So if you buy Archer's Advantage software, you can make a 150-yard tape if you want. It's not difficult to do. Uh, and I agree, there's definitely a demand for that. Um, but they're probably not going to from a, that standpoint. But you can ma make them, and they're easy. And anybody who's playing with a, a single-pin site a lot probably ought to purchase that because it it's like 20 bucks a year or something but you can generate whatever you want you can change the gauge and the width of the lines you can d extend how far it goes i mean but if you look at yours you're maxing out at a hundo i mean you're really close to running into your arrow at that point yep how much longer would you really want a sight tape and that's part of the downfall of like and this having a 130 yard sight tape you're if you're not careful you're going to stick it on there move your sight down to 130 yards and send your arrow right through your sight because <laughs> you can't shoot that far so yes, this is like moves down that far but you're going to run into the path of the arrow at some point so one of the things i was going to ask you is okay so we we shot through a chrono yeah we 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 threw this 275 on yep but where does the weight of the arrow come into consideration of the sight tape so on on a sight tape like this this is just to get started so we're gonna run out to outside and shoot at like 60 yards and see if it's high or low. Move it up and down until we find the right one. And if it's you know 58 yards on here, we'll come back and find a different sight tape that works because that number is just a starting point. 
Uh, a heavier arrow, obviously, it's going to go slower. A lighter arrow, it's going to go faster and it's going to compress or decompress. But like on black gold, these numbers are not actually your velocity. It's what they're going to associate that sight tape with. So just because you shoot 275 doesn't mean this is the right sight tape for you. It's a starting point, not a finishing point. And we're going to go figure out where the finishing point is right now. So we're just kind of checking ticks. Obviously that 275 feet per second sight tape was a starter sent to downrange and we're hot. So my 50, current 50 on my tape, I'm just gonna move up to probably 45 and see where my arrows hit. We'll shoot one more and we'll call it a day. We'll just be close before we leave Spokane Valley Archery. 50's hot on that sight tape. A little fast? It's a little hot. Is it? Twist those strings. Probably too much. So as you guys can see in the video, what we did is a couple things and I feel like I had to recap it here. So we made this string shorter. So we basically twisted the string to make the length proper so that the draw length was exactly 25 and a quarter as far as that measurement on the arrow. And then we made the peep height correct as well. We adjusted that. And what we ended up doing was slapping on a new sight just because Josh wanted me to try a single pin for a couple of weeks. And so what you didn't see there or to wonder why we were doing that is the rails were good to go, so you can adjust the rails right here on this bow as far as your first level. They were doped, so he just, uh, as you saw, he adjusted the second axis with the bubble. And then I went outside, we just guessed, uh, we shot through the chrono, 275 feet a second. And I know I read a comment on here, someone wanted to know how to sight a single pin in. And so that's kind of what we did is we just guessed and grabbed a 275 tape from Black Gold that comes standard, slapped it on there and shot out at 50. We realized we were a little hot. Remember, those sight tapes are just starting points. They don't know your arrow weight. They don't know your feet per second exactly with that arrow weight. So you have to kind of tweak with it a little bit. Realize we were a little hot, so we bumped up to a, a new sight tape, which we did later at 288 feet a second, and that matched up just right. So basically we did 20 and 50, and then I'm still tinkering, shooting out longer distances, and just fine tuning that sight tape for the single pin setup. But the whole point of the video was that you could try to make your new bow fit just like your old bow if your old bow just fet, felt like money which the verdicts did it fit me really well and this was getting a little squirrely so we got that adjustment and now it's this thing's shooting awesome thanks for watching hit the subscribe button if you like geeking out on archery if you like working harder every day in the name of better elk hunting hit the tap the bell to be notified we're dropping content weekly appreciate you guys we'll catch you on the next one